Hey everybody, my name is Bo Chang. I'm a solutions architect within the DNB or digital natives business. And today we're here to talk about Databricks asset bundles. It's a standard unified approach to deploying data products and ML products for Databricks DNB customers. So what we hope to do with DABs is to bring simplicity and support for CI/CD processes on Databricks. So before building CI/CD pipelines could be complex, incomplete and inconsistent. Tools were either not natively supported, so we're looking at kind of DBX on the spectrum here. DBX was a Databricks Labs product, and it wasn't natively supported. It could be too complex if we don't have any DevOps engineers on the team. So Terraform comes to mind, an infrastructure as code tool, and sometimes is missing capabilities. So as you can see on this kind of matrix, we have where DABs fits. It's got fully native support, um, actually wraps around Terraform, and so it's an easier interface for machine learning engineering and data engineering teams. Beforehand, getting to production was really challenging. Of course, we could use IAC, such as the Databricks Terraform provider. It's powerful in general. However, um, if we didn't have DevOps rocket scientists or engineers on the team, it could be tough. So if your persona was more of a machine learning engineering team, getting MLflow-based models on, deploying and running those tasks could have been a little harder. And prior to that, we also had DBX, which sat above our REST APIs. It was more accessible than Terraform, but there was no formal support, and we've actually kind of sunsetted it. Uh, it's now not, not being actively maintained, and we will link the migration plan uh, underneath. And then we also have Databricks REST APIs, which are low-level, scriptable, but kind of more do-it-yourself. So they're error-prone and brittle, and it's generally not recommended. It doesn't have any state file type of support. So we thought about how can we simplify this process? We wanted to write the code once and deploy it to multiple workspaces easily. So if you think about this, if you put your deployment process right next to your code, you can go across maybe your feature branch to your dev branch to your main branch or maybe a release branch even and go across multiple workspaces from your dev workspace to your staging workspace to your production workspace. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Co-version your code with simple configuration files and that's why they're in YAML format. We wanted to define Databricks resources using existing REST API parameters so we don't have to learn new lingo around the arguments. And then we also can specify environment-based overrides and variables. So if you think about it in terms of a GitHub type environment, if you have a GitHub action, you can also specify environment secrets that can pass along a specific target. And this ensures user isolation. You might be wondering also, what exactly is a Databricks Asset Bundle, or DAB? It's a collection of Databricks artifacts, such as jobs, machine learning ML flow models, DLT pipelines and clusters, also assets such as Python files or even Python scripts for your Databricks app, notebooks, SQL queries, and also dashboards. DABs does wrap around Terraform, which enables state tracking, and we'll kind of cover this in detail in a later slide. Um, it does generate a Terraform.tf state. And these DABs or bundles are represented in a configuration file. And like I said, can be co-versioned in the same repository as the assets and artifacts referenced in the bundle. Thus, you can kind of use local references and paths. Using the Databricks CLI, these bundles can then be materialized across multiple workspaces, uh, enabling customers to integrate these into the CI CD workflows. So GitHub Actions here. So we wanted to first cover what a Databricks YAML or the configuration setting at the very top level looks like, and then we'll kind of demo this. So here we have the bundle definition, which is the name. It also uses the include argument to show which resources. So if there are those who are familiar with Terraform, you can also use resources here, but you could divvy this up any which way you like, maybe apps in one folder, models in another folder, um, workflows in another, or workflows or jobs in another folder, that kind of thing. You want to define your workspace. And in this case, we also define the resource right next to it. However, generally we don't recommend it for this. We can split them up in like a resources folder. And again, we can use local relative paths to code. As you can see, this notebook task and its path is relative to where the code sits. And then we can also deploy targets. So this is kind of what we're talking about in terms of going multi-workspace deployments, maybe across branches for your code. So in this case, if you want to go from maybe a feature branch or dev branch, you would develop using the development mode and go to the dev target. Next is like production target or a staging target. 
And you can kind of define these and you have per target overrides. So for example, here, you could have multiple workspaces. So before we go to the CLI commands, we'll pivot to our demo or Databricks YAML. This is an example, an example Databricks YAML configuration. As you can see here, very akin to Terraform, we can also define variables. This is the bundle name I've defined. And then we can also include the resources. Again, you can split this however which way you want. It's very configurable. In this example demo, we only have the development workspace. But as you can see, you can define development, staging, and production very easily here. Inside of these resources, I'd like to cover just a few of them. Here, we actually have a Databricks app, which actually interacts with our chatbot, which will be deployed from, and as you can see, you can add permissions as well, this job. This job is a notebook task single job that basically passes in the uh, Unity Catalog catalog, Unity Catalog schema and the model name and deploys a model serving endpoint with which the app will interact with. These are the two um, bundles which we will deploy and run. So switching back to our CLI commands. Here are the bundle CLI commands. We can validate or check for issues with the bundle configuration. So this is very akin to a Terraform plan. We just want to make sure our configuration can be run before we deploy and run. Next is deployment. We synchronize the code to the workspace and materialize the fine resources. So this is where that Terraform TF state really comes into play. We see what resources have drifted, how we can adapt for them, and then apply our resources. Next, we can run or interact with the deployed resources. So for example, in our job, we deploy the job first and that artifact gets created within the workspace. But next we need to click run, so to speak, and enable another job run. And covering into definition of the bundle state, bundles do use the Databricks workspace for file and state storage. It defaults to a secret bundle file, as you can see here, a bundle folder, and then it follows this naming convention. Um, if it doesn't exist, it will be a full file, file sync and create these underlying state resources. And if it, it does exist, it's an incremental file sync, very akin to Terraform, and creates, updates, deletes resources. And the default can be modified to incorporate additional dimensions. So you might be asking, where can we use bundles? Bundles can be used to deploy and run your project, tweak configs, and deploy and test changes. As you can see here, we use the CLI command, Databricks bundle deploy target development. Now, I will give the caveat that before you start development and you start using a Databricks YAML, you can refer, refer to my peer Dustin Van Noy's video on how to initialize a Databricks asset bundle template. It would be Databricks bundle init. We won't cover that in this video, but please refer to that one. Here, you would deploy to the target of the development workspace or the development configuration settings. And then you would also run a DLT pipeline to refresh all and using that same target. And how could this deploy to multiple workspaces, you're wondering? So as you can see here, you can use it as part of a CI CD process. So in this case, maybe you have a dev branch, which automatically is coinciding with your dev workspace. But from a pull request, you validate first upon creation of that pull request. If that validation passes from a Databricks bundle, then you deploy when you merge the pull request and go to your main branch. Your main branch would then correlate with your staging workspace or your staging target. As you can see here, Databricks bundle deploy target staging. Run that pipeline. And then similarly, when you want to go to your release branch, you could deploy to production. This is all executed on CICD servers, in this case, GitHub Actions, and it's triggered by a CI release by pipelines. Again, ideally from an authentication standpoint, this demo will show using a personal access token, which may be fine for development reasons. However, Ideally, you would run as a service principal and use a service principal secret for M to M authentication. So we'll go back to GitHub. I'd like to show exactly how we coordinate this. So as you can see here, when we open a pull request on the branch dev, we deploy using a Databricks bundle validate. We tell it the environment that we're target, the target environment we're going to, which is dev we use a Databricks token, in this case, a personal authentication token, 
But I've also commented out, you can use a client ID and client secret, which are akin to the service principle. Once this passes, then we can hit the Databricks bundle deploy action. Here, you can deploy the same exact target, in this case, dev, and then run a job. So in this case, this is my RAG chatbot notebook task job. And then following that, depending on that job, we also run the app, which interacts with the workspace. I'd love to show that. So this is what it looks like generally from a GitHub Actions perspective. We deploy the bundle first, so all of the artifacts kind of sync with the workspace. And then we run our jobs associated with the deployed artifacts. So what does this look like within our UI? I'd love to show you. So in this case, you might see, hey, this is a moniker for a Databricks asset bundle. This is my target, and this is the user who deployed it. This is exactly what I mentioned in terms of the job name. As you can see, it's connected to Databricks asset bundles. You can disconnect it from the source, but when you deploy again, it will overwrite. Next, you see we've gone ahead and deployed an app. In this uh, notebook job, we deployed a model serving endpoint, as you can see here. Using the name of this model serving endpoint, we're able to interact with this in the Databricks app. This app was the third step in the run GitHub Action Pipeline. When you run the app, you can then launch the app and chat with your existing model endpoint. I hope this was helpful. Um, please refer to resources uh, that we have additional. So from Dab's documentation, bundles, examples, and substitutions. And of course, feel free to reach out if there's any further questions.